How to Use Checkoff with Jenkins. How do you know if the Terraform code that you're writing is secure? In this video, we're going to be using Checkoff, an open source analysis tool to help us find and remediate problems with our Terraform code. Here's our starting point for today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.319.3. I don't have a static agent attached to this controller, but I do have this controller connected to a Kubernetes cluster, so we'll be spinning up Checkoff within a container. Checkoff is also available as binaries, so if you don't have Kubernetes available, you can just use the binary and you can just try it out that way. Before we get started, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the Checkoff site, and it's at checkoff.io, and it's policy as code for everyone. It scans cloud infrastructure configurations, but it's not just limited to Terraform. You can do Terraform, CloudFormation, Kubernetes Helm, ARM templates, and many other things. Now, we also have a sample repository for this video. And the link for this repository is down in the description. So what we have is a folder that says compliant and a folder that's non-compliant. We'll look at those in just a moment. And then I have four Jenkins files. Now, for the compliant and non-compliant, I'm using an example from Chekhov's Quick Start about an S3 bucket configuration. And in fact, if you take a look at it, the link for this is also down in the description. They have a compliant version and also a non-compliant version that's here. So this is where we're going to be starting from with a few variations. But this was the influence for how I created this demo. Now let's go back over to our repository and take a look at the main TF. And we can see it's just an S3 bucket with some information. That's OK. It's a good start. Now, also for our compliant version, what we have is the exact same file. So I've created this repository at the time of recording for compliant and non-compliant to be exactly the same. As we go through the video, we'll be making our changes in the compliant folder. So when you come and take a look at this later, you'll be able to look at the non-compliant and compare it to the compliant and see how it worked at least at this point. More about that in a few moments. Now, remember that I said that we were going to be using Checkoff in a container. And we can find the Checkoff container out at Docker Hub under Bridge Crew Checkoff. But one thing you'll notice is right now, latest was pushed an hour ago. The tag two was also pushed, so it's the same tag. It's 136 if you take a look at it. But the current version is 888-20888. So all of my Jenkins files have that tag within the Jenkins files. So that's OK. But notice, there's 888 an hour ago, 887 three hours ago, 886 four hours ago, 885 20 hours ago. What I want you to see here is that this image is being updated very actively. So by the time you're seeing this, that 888 is probably going to be a much larger number. That's a really good thing because that means Checkoff is being actively developed and maintained. A really great thing. So let's go ahead and go over to our controller and let's go ahead and create a job. So we're going to say Checkoff, Pipeline, click OK. Let's go down to Pipeline Script from SCM, get our URL, change this to Main. And then the first one that we're going to run is Jenkins file dash one. I'm going to click on save and then let's go back over to our repository and take a look at Jenkins file one. We set up our agent for, in our case, 20888 because that's the most recent version that we have. I'm going to run a checkoff version just to make sure that I can see it, no problem. But then I'm also going to run dash dash help. So let's go ahead and go back over and let's do build now. And now that it's completed, we can see the output from our checkoff version. Scroll, scroll, scroll is 20888, which is what we expected. And then when we run help, we can see all the different options that are going to be available to us. Now, in our example, we're going to be remaining very simple. But I wanted you to take a look at what options are available to you via the command line. So the one that we're going to be using in our example today is we're going to be using dash D for the directory. Remember that we have two directories. I have a non-compliant and I have a compliant. So let's go back over and take a look at our repository again. And let's take a look at Jenkins file two. And with two, 
I'm still keeping the version. I like to have the version. And then I'm going to say check off dash D non-compliant. Okay, so let's do that first. We know we're going to be making changes to our compliant side, but let's look at non-compliant first to see what it would look like in a fairly normal situation. We're going to check off configure and do Jenkins file dash two. Let's click on save and build now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the output from the checkoff run. We can see we're saying checkoff dash D non-compliant, which means use the Terraform files. In our case, we're using Terraform. Checkoff is smart enough to know without me even telling it what types of files are in there, but I could also specify that if I wanted to, but it understood that I'm using Terraform. And it gives us the check that's being run and it tells us whether it passed or if it failed. So we can see we have a bunch of passes and then we have a handful of fails with the explanations. But the other thing that we have also is a link off to a guide, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. Now let's go back over and take a look at our Jenkins file three. That run was against our non-compliant version, which I don't want to make any changes to because we're going to be making our changes to get it into compliance within our compliant directory. So here we can see with Jenkins file three, that we're going to be running checkoff dash D for compliant. At this point, compliant and non-compliant are exactly the same. Just to prove that out, let's go ahead and change this over to Jenkins file three. Click on save and click on build now. Let's scroll back up and take a look at this. When it ran at the beginning, it was checkoff dash D and now it's in compliant. So this is going to be our starting point now to start making changes to our Terraform file to get it to pass all of the checkoff tests. Now, before we do that, I want to call out one thing. Right now, we see everything that applies to this Terraform, whether it passes or fails. Let's set this up to where we only find out about things that fail. So within our repository, we have one more Jenkins file. And there are two options that we can pass in. We can pass in quiet, and we can also pass in compact. This will help reduce the noise of everything that is successful, because I don't really care if it was successful or not. All I care about right now is I only want to know what has failed. By also specifying compact, what will also happen is it will not output the code that failed. So compact will give me just the information from this point and quiet will only give me the failed. So let's go ahead and make one more change and then we'll start making our fixes to our Terraform file. So check off, configure, and let's go to dash four and build now. So now we can see all of our past items have been muted, and we don't see the code that was failing. And that's great because we don't really need to see it because we know there's only one entry there at this point. So let's go ahead and get these fixes in. So for this AWS 144, it's saying, ensure that the S3 bucket has cross-region replication enabled. Well, I might not know the exact Terraform that I need to put in to make that happen, but this guide does know how to do that. So I've opened up the guide in another page, and what it gives me is the fix. So I can just copy this fix. I know that's gonna go inside the resource. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go back over to our repository and I'll just make the changes right here. Go to compliant, main TF. Let's go ahead and click on edit. And in my case, that's a resource. Let's put it down here below ACL. So with this, we'll paste that in. I need to get rid of all those plus signs. So let's do that real quick. Do that and that and that and that and that. Okay. So that takes care of that one thing. In fact, let's just go ahead and save this. Let's go run the job one more time. So we'll iterate through each of these. So check off. Let's click on build now. Okay, by fixing that one, we've gotten rid of one of our failures. 
The next one is ensure that the S3 bucket has a public access block. Okay, again, we'll use the guide to help us with this. If we take a look at the output, we can see here that we need to add in a block. So we see here's our bucket, but we need to set up a block. So in my case, I'm going to make sure I reference the bucket. Let's go back over to our repository. What level is that? That level is in parallel with resource, okay? Good. So we'll do that. Let's go ahead and go to the bottom. We'll paste that here. And our resource IDs, I'm okay with that. What I need to change here though, is my bucket to foo bucket. So bucket good one is, is it foo underscore bucket? No, dash. So foo dash bucket, whoops, bucket ID. Everything else looks pretty good. Let's click on commit changes. And let's go run this job one more time. Okay, we resolved that one issue, but after resolving that one issue, we now have a different set of issues. So we peeled off one layer of the onion, now we have something else to resolve. Again, this is the iteration that you would go through if you're running this inside of Jenkins. You might wanna run checkoff locally while you're working on your Terraform file, but by having it also in your pipeline, at least you know that your Terraform is staying compliant all the way through the process. So let's take a look at this one. Our build time fix here is we need to ignore public ACLs. Okay, we will do that. Where does that go again? That goes in the resource. Okay. Okay with that. Let's put that right here in between. And let's go ahead and check out this other one because it looks very similar. So open a new tab and it does look similar. So let's just go ahead and do this. Well, these are actually inside the block. Oh, okay, let's go fix that. So it goes here and let's go and pull this down because I put this in the wrong place. That's okay. And let's put that there. All right. Click commit changes. And let's do this one more time. Now that we've run this one more time, we can see that all 14 checks have passed. We don't have anything failed or anything skipped. Why should you use an analysis tool on your Terraform code? By applying static analysis to your Terraform code, this can help reduce the amount of time spent on code reviews because those code reviews are already automated in the tool. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.